Why hello there friends, it's Emma here, the Bookish Princess. I hope you're all having a very happy Friday. Today we are taking an armchair trip to England. I absolutely love to travel. In fact, the reason I started this YouTube channel seven years ago was because I had a trip across the Atlantic coming up and I wanted to document it. These days, it's obviously difficult because everyone's stuck at home. Many people have had to cancel trips and vacations. I know one way I've been trying to distract myself is by thinking about past adventures and thinking about beautiful places I've been lucky enough to visit. So for today, I'm digging deeper into the past to take us all on a virtual trip. Some of you may recall if you've been a member of the Bookish Kingdom, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, back in 2016, I went on a trip to the United Kingdom and Ireland. I traveled around England with my cousin Becky. We both love books, so we visited plenty of literary spots. We saw a play at Shakespeare's Globe in London. We went to the British Library. We took a train from London out to Ely, which is a cathedral city where one of my favorite authors, Elizabeth Googe, lived. And Ely is also an inspiration behind one of my favorite books by Elizabeth Googe, Dean's Watch. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. Obviously, this trip happened in 2016. I filmed and edited these vlogs several years ago, and my editing and filming skills have improved and evolved since then. So if you notice a difference in quality, that's why. But I'm still proud of these vlogs. It was such a memorable trip with so many amazing moments. So for those of you who, like me, have been looking for ways to satisfy your travel bug while you're stuck at home, I hope you enjoy. A train, that's us. There it is, Heathrow Express and Underground. We're walking along the Westbourne News in our hotel, the park is the Hyde London Grand Hyde Park. London Park Grand Hyde Park. It's a hard name to get right. There are a lot of words in there. They seem kind of like the same words over and over. Anyway, our hotel should be right up here. We're gonna get our bags dropped off. Look who's here, guys. It's Becky. <laughs> Wait, stop. It's opening. This is London. We're in London at the very start of our trip. We're off to St. Paul's first, and then the Globe <laughs> tonight. Look at this little house just sandwiched in between everything else. It even has its own little balcony up there. That's adorable. Red phone booths. These are the first red phone booths of the trip. That's Hyde Park right there. We're about to get on the tube. We're taking the Circle, no, Central Line. Central is, I think, red. We're heading down to the central line. We just got our oyster cards. This one is 78 steps. Some are much, much more, much deeper. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. The way out. I like that. Not just like exit. Like this is the way out. Here is St. Paul's Cathedral. Wow, it looks so beautiful, the dome kind of hidden by all the branches. This is exciting. This is where Diana and Charles got married. Ooh. Not William and Kate. That was over at Big Buster Abbey. Abbey. Yes. You guys, I think there might be a wedding going on right now. We're not sure we're going to... I mean, surely it's open to visitors. Wouldn't that be on the website? I didn't see it on the website. I did not see it on the website. I like the hats, though. Well... I don't know. That's possible. These hats don't quite match um, Beatrice and Eugenie's hats. None of them have butterflies, but they're pretty good. Look, here's the bride. Oh my gosh. 
Wow, imagine getting married at St. Paul's. That's pretty Yeah, and the buses, and the clock tower, and the London Eye, Houses of Parliament. Big Ben, we think, is hidden somewhere, unless he's hidden in plain sight, but I don't see him. I think he's behind that high rise. going back down about 10 bajillion million <laughs> steps. Yes. Also, you can't do video Constantly. photography inside the cathedral, but up here we think it's okay because there weren't any signs. Oh my gosh, it's signs. such a beautiful view though. I didn't even know about this part. Like usually this is the part of the cathedral, cathedral they don't let you come up. Right, yeah. You know, so it's really cool. So you can open. go all the way up to the, the golden guys. Right, the one, yeah. The Upstairs. We're not More up steps. to that many steps though. That's I'm too much. Also, steps. we have to get over to the globe. Now, back inside the tiny corridors and <laughs> I love steps like this that are just worn with age. So we just finished up at St. Paul's Cathedral. The gift shop had too many tempting things and delayed us. And now we are going to rush for the globe. The globe. <laughs> yep, that's where we're going. There's St. Paul's behind us. Oh, you're right, it's uneven. And now we're heading down Peter's Row in the Museum Bridge, just like we saw a minute ago. I love all these streets. They're all so like, tiny and turn such unexpected corners. They just have character, you know? More streets Lots need to be like this, not straight and boring. I mean, I guess it's easier to navigate. To places, <laughs> but they don't have, like, you know? No, it's not the same. Yeah. During the interval, how was your hot dog, Becky? Good. Good. Start shopping. Okay. So we just finished watching The Taming of the Shrew here at the Globe. We kind of had to run to get here from St. Paul's, but we did make it. It was, especially the way they involved the audience and like, you know, and the stage is so different and they definitely try to talk to all the different people in all the different parts of the audience. Like we were way off to the side, but we still got a really cool experience. What is this? Twitter writes the complete word. Scotland search live tweets to find the relevant words. They should tell you what what tw tweets they find the words in. And actually, you know how Shakespeare Sunday is a thing? It's a hashtag. No, I didn't. Like, yeah, it is. Every okay. Sunday, they people encourage people to tweet things. so they could probably find the complete lines on, on Twitter. On like, people who just tweeted literal quotes, not uh -huh. just words. Is that like the monkey types Shakespeare? Is that the idea behind that? Isn't that a thing to you? Like, if you put like, a monkey in front of a typewriter, eventually it would type. Or maybe it's just like place. how pervasive or how universal Shakespeare is. That's true. Or how that, pervasive his words are. There are some words that would be hard to find, though. Like in true. Hamlet, he, or so, it was he just says, typing meeting Maleko. Oh, how did it find that word? I don't know. It, it'd be hard to find meeting Maleko, although I have to admit I might have tweeted that. So maybe it wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> so there you go, somebody. Anyway, here we are in London. Guys, we just passed someone wheeling their unicycle over Millennium Bridge. That's fantastic. I don't know if you can see him up there. Wasn't it? Uh, 
penny farthing or whatever. Oh, it's penny the big farthing. Wheel. It looks you're very right. It ride. wasn't a unicycle. Excuse me. You're an expert on these things. How did you know this? I know people. So I know a guy who rode a unicycle so 40 cool. miles. Wow, that's yes. impressive. So, so a unicycle ridiculous. truly has one wheel, yes. whereas the penny farthing has the tiny wheel and the big yes. wheel. Okay, got it. We are at Bankside, strolling down to catch a ferry. Look at this, perfect timing. It's literally pulling up right now. And this is just a normal like part of London transportation. You can use your Oyster card. futuristic tube station. I can't even tell if so much rain is coming from there. Isn't this so pretty? Look at all the greenery on this house. We're off to Farm Street Church for Mass. And I was just saying to Becky, it's been a barely made it kind of day because like it's like I think five minutes to six and that's yes. just six and like the globe we obviously had to sprint for like they literally had just shut the door and on their website they're like oh you have to be on time yep. at two o'clock exactly we're shutting the door but luckily the girl had seen us running <laughs> and was like oh I'll let you in so I was like yeah I know I was I knew we were close and I was not gonna miss it by 30 seconds no. <laughs> poor Becky I made her run <laughs> but we made it and yes. now we're gonna have, go to mass, we're meeting some lovely friends for dinner. I think we're going to a place called the Spaghetti House. That sounds really fun. Yeah. And then we are, I think, just going back to the hotel because yeah. I, I <laughs> just, just like, I'm still not sure exactly what time it is. So, yeah, yeah it'll be good to be on the right clock. Yeah. We're going up here. Mass is starting. We're having breakfast here at the Park Grand London Hyde Park. I finally almost got my name right. <laughs> wow, look at these. Oh my goodness. All sorts of English breakfast things. There's juice and fruit and toaster. Thank you. Up the stairs. I love stairs in British hotels. They're always like these super, super windy. I think it's one more, right? Yeah, this is right. I love all the crazy doors and corners and hallways. And here's our room. This is our club room, club suite. I can't remember what she called it. I love this though. Club room. Club room. room. Yeah, see, I was expecting just more like that, which is very tiny, which is what most London hotel rooms are. But we have this whole little loft. It's got a couch and a fridge and an ironing board. And this enormous window I've never even seen. Is that a huge window? <laughs> And oh my gosh, the view is out on the Westbourne Terrace. It's so pretty. Last, we can't actually get out onto the balcony because that's what that white thing is for. I feel like, if I, if I had to, I could get through there. If, but if only if I had to. Otherwise, I might break it. <laughs> that's probably for safety Yeah, that, that makes sense. Although, we were passing yesterday, um, there were a bunch of, I guess, people, normal people only that. We should have invited ourselves. They were just like sitting up here, enjoying it. 
Now the party can start. We have arrived. Yes, this is Westbourne Terrace. And Paddington is just a couple blocks that way, so it's a very nice location. The camera can fit through, just not me. Doors <laughs> opening. They have goldfish in the lobby. We are off for day two. Well, in Ely. Paddington, a Paddington station. Should we try to find? There is a Paddington Bear statue. Oh, maybe we should try to find that later today. There are all the trains out there. Is it coming? I feel like I hear it. Look at how far down you can see it. It's changing. Oh, we're waiting for the tube. <laughs> this is she's, she's very sure. She sounds like a powerful baby. I like it. <laughs> there goes the district line. It sounds like the two captain maybe in the step, but I couldn't even understand what you're We just passed Baker Street, guys. I wish we could just talk him up and say hello to Benedict Cumberbatch. He doesn't like that. <laughs> he doesn't. Sure, like, Wait, are you telling me he's two different wear, people? Like, the coats and everything? Okay, bye. Oh, we can send hello to Sherlock too, right? He is Sherlock. Here's King's Cross. This is where our train to Ely is leaving from. Oh my gosh, that's called the Plum and Spilt Milk Restaurant. That's pretty fantastic. Alright. We are exiting Ely Station, train station now. Look, the blue sky is starting to come out for us. It was very misty as we yeah, came along through the British countryside. Becky brought along these McVitie's Digestive Nibbles. McVitie's Digestives are like the most amazing thing ever. They're cookies, they're like little biscuity cookies. Chocolate on one side, and then there's like a biscuit. Um, or well, not an American biscuit, it's like British biscuit. Right. Um, but yeah, our lovely friends. Um, gave us such amazing, so many amazing British treats. So now we're gonna have like train snacks for the entire <laughs> trip. Doesn't it look like that could be Isaac Peabody's shop? From the book, from Dean's Watch. You guys all need to go read Dean's Watch now so you will understand all the references that I'm about to make. Because I feel like no one's read Dean's Watch, but I am about to make a million and one Dean's Watch references. I tried to look up the streets that she references. But it's a, it's a fictional town. Right, it's a fictionalized Ely, but it is. Like, she lived in Ely. It's inspired by Ely. So, I bet we'll stop past something that looks like that. And there's an adorable bookshop, which oh. one of you guys, one of my oh. commenters commented about, and I had just been looking it up. Oh, fun. I think it's Topping and Company, maybe? <gasps> oh, yes. Yeah. But there is a bookshop in Dean's Watch, too. It's um, oh. Featherstones, I think. Oh. It's the St. Peter's, which there are a million churches. Yeah, yes, generally <laughs> in Dean's watch, I was thinking, because like Isaac uh, Peabody, one of the main characters, is a clockmaker, and he likes to keep all the clocks in the shop a little bit slow, because then he listens to, I think, there's like, the, they, they, they it's beautiful, it's a beautiful the description, though, like, because each clock bell has its own, um, 
uh, tone, but also character. Like some of them want to get in first, and some of them are lazy and get in late. Make sure to St. Peter's Church by the marketplace, and also it's St. Peter's Fen Church in. You know what I'm talking about. Read my mind. Get it it's there. No. The Nine Tailors by Dorothy <laughs> Sayers, which is also okay, not set in a cathedral sense. town. How utterly charming is this? Isn't it beautiful? There it is. And it's what it, the church, the what's it called? It's compared the ship of the fens. It does kind of look like a ship in sail. Oh my gosh! I was reading a little bit about it. Actually, we'll learn more in there. But I think the towers were constructed at different times, and like there was one tower that fell in, so they had to build a new one. Secret, Becky says there's a secret garden. I'm not telling them to see it, but as soon as I take the camera down and watch this footage, they won't be able to see it. <laughs> the camera can see it, but I can't. Oh, that does look charming. Elizabeth Gouge's father was, I'm not sure if it was King. The de it was, she, he was the dean? Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I can't, I don't know what he was. If he was just one of the canons or the dean, but yeah, here's the, but so he lived here and she would have lived here. The King's School Canonry House. Look at I love all these layers of old buildings and new green. It's just magic. Just a side entrance. In Dean's watch, there's there are always people watching the side entrances, sitting outside on benches, and they all have really good. I can't remember the guy's name. But Wow, the birds must have so much fun up there. Like I've already seen a whole bunch of birds nesting and you can hear them, yeah. And they have so many different places to land and explore. Look at this little row of tiny, tiny houses. See, maybe these, this would have been, I mean, Isaac Peabody's shop was close to the marketplace, but oh, the house yeah. was quite close to the cathedral, I'm pretty sure. Only Isaac Peabody wouldn't have had that. <laughs> Look at this place. It's Topping and Company, Booksellers of Ely. I love the blue front. Oh, there's Becky. We found her. Ooh. Elizabeth Googe, at least they have the little white horse here in the gift shop. There's the cathedral. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, you could just sit here and read all day. Or I could anyway. This bookshop is so charming. It has one more floor. In fact, I think they have complimentary coffee and tea upstairs. I found this book so far by Margaret Forster. Uh, My Life in Houses. It just looks really cool about all the different houses that they've lived in. And especially as we're passing by all these cool British houses, I thought it'd be a fun one to pick up. I'm sure I'm, I'm not done shopping yet, so probably I'll find more. <laughs> How beautiful are these? Snow Donia. That's up in the north. 50 pounds. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful though.
poetry collections. Oh my gosh. This looks so charming. Oh my gosh. You guys, they will bring you complimentary tea or coffee while you peruse your books. I'm just trying to decide which poetry I want. In this little tray with, oh my gosh. How utterly charming is this? I mean, why don't all bookshops do this? Barnes and Noble, you need to up your game and it needs to be free. <laughs> it needs to be complimentary because, oh my gosh, Becky and I have found so many books. This is going to be a really dangerous shop. And there's the cathedral right there. This is my favorite bookshop in like the entire world right now. <laughs> there's even a little cookie to go with your coffee. I'm sorry, I just can't get over how lovely this is. It's a delightful tea. <laughs> it's a delightful tea. Becky doesn't drink tea or coffee. I mean, I have to admit, I didn't originally, but then just for the cozy factor, I, I, I learned like the idea. to like <laughs> tea and coffee. <laughs> no, but when I was studying um, in Ireland, before I studied in Dublin, I drank tea at like every lunch for a year. I, it was the terrible Lipton tea from the dining hall, but I was like, I'm going to be drinking tea now, so I'm going to get myself in the habit. <laughs> and that, well, it's good. see, I'm not like addicted to it or anything, but I do very much enjoy it. <laughs> by A. E. Houseman mm -hmm. from a Shropshire lad. Shropshire lad. Loveliest of trees, the cherry now is hung with bloom along the bough, and stands about the woodland ride, wearing white for Easter tide. Now, of my three score years and ten, twenty will not come again, and take from seventy springs a score, it only leaves me fifty more. And since to look at things in bloom, fifty springs are little room, about the woodlands I will go to see the cherry hung with snow. You guys, these are all Faber Nature Poets. They're a series, and they're so beautiful. I kind of want all of them. <laughs> In fact, I think I have those. Wordsworth is one of them, too. And his poems are edited by Seamus Heaney. And I have another volume of Wordsworth that's edited by Seamus Heaney. So I think I already bought that one. So I'm not, I don't need to buy it. In the, in the nice cover, but I totally want one of these. I like Coleridge. I never heard of Edward Thomas or John Clare and Thomas Hardy. He, I mean, I know he did like Far From the Man and Crown. Right, and um, Jude the Obscure. Jude the Obscure, yeah. So I've read, I've read some of his books, but I didn't know he wrote poetry. I want all of them. This is a dilemma. But a good kind of dilemma. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real. The introductions of all these poetry collections are all written by, they must be, they're obviously written by people who were really passionate about these poets. So all of them make the poets sound so cool and really make you want to buy them. Like about John Clare, he says that, um, John Clare, this is a quote from John Clare when he was out wandering. I eagerly wandered on and rambled among the firs the whole day till I got out of my knowledge. The very wild flowers and birds seemed to forget me. I imagined they were the inhabitants of new countries. Like they're foreign, like they're foreign people, because just mm -hmm. because he'd wandered far from home, like <laughs> on his own two feet. And there was one in Edward Thomas. He was so good. Just the back of the Edward Thomas one is pretty great. This heart, some fraction of me, happily floats through the window, even now to a tree. <laughs> Almost as soon as I could babble, I babbled of green fields. <laughs> P.G. Woodhouse, and they have these ones, which I've seen on Booktube, and they have Persephone books. Oh my god. Well, that was completely and utterly charming. <laughs> that was so much fun. Oh my god.
finished around about 13. were present, a few degrees to the right, and it was gone over. Good. Come Just a tree, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, this tree's a good tree. Okay, use it. Oh, my God, this thing Wow, there's lots of graffiti. Although it's all recent. Oh, no, 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 no. Apparently, this tower used to have both its pairs of, you can see those other, well, I kind of just said you, those other towers. There used to be a matching set, and then it was too much weight, and they fell down, and apparently there used to be a tower here that fell in that direction. <laughs> think a person would ever go and do it. <laughs> no. You made it. And it's the easiest flight. Not not bad at all. <laughs> This is probably though about the size, or maybe even larger than the one that we just used to get up to the, to the tower. And there's the octagon tower where we just were. We saw that those panels open, and that that's where the monks would sing. How incredible would that have been? So I think in this church you must be encouraged not to watch the altar. But to look up because <laughs> the paintings on the ceiling now those are Victorian. Originally, um, it would have been plainer, but still. 
The cathedral shop has tons of stationery, which is extremely dangerous. Look at that lady. She's so fabulous. And that one, so snobby. Just exploring some more of Ely. Seeing the shops. Seeing what we can see. Tea for two. I can sell us these croissants. So it's too delicious. So we got ourselves some lunch for the train. Look at them. They have like a kind of miniature Sunday market here. Look at this little door. It looks so charming. And then there's a pink. Oh, yeah. This is the pink house. So I got this yeah. Riding London map at St. Paul's because it looked kind of like a thing I should own. <laughs> they have all these different sites. Look, they have places where writers used to work, including P.G. Woodhouse's uh, bank that he used to work at, just like in Leave It to Smith. Leave It to P. Smith. Uh, Smith also tries to work at it one point. Apparently Nancy Mintford worked in a bookshop along Piccadilly. Also Brown's Hotel, which was a favorite of Mark Twain, Agatha Christie, Bridget Kipling, and A.A. Milne. Am I saying that? Yeah. Milne? Oh, I said Milne. I think so. This is apparently where The Woman in White appeared in a, the book called The Woman in White by Logan Collins, which I just finished reading. I mean, I don't think we're going to be able to visit all of them, but it'll be fun to see, um, if we, if we pass it, you will have to. I don't know. <laughs> Make a look. And Becky here is looking at my Jane Austen's yeah. London book to prepare us because we're going to scroll around. We exactly. walk from Ely now and are going to British Library. Yep. And then we're going to do the evening service or organize that. Well, like, 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 Which is our next stop? It's Alice. British Library, this way. I think they might have Jane Austen writing desk here. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder if it'll be out on exhibit. Yes. Did you have a Shakespeare exhibit on? Although I think we're thinking of skipping it and just looking at the free stuff because that is cost extra. Um. And we did just have a free other thing. Shakespeare at the Globe yesterday. So cool. These must all be books from the collection. Like, you know, it's not just for flow. These look like they're all yeah. books from their collection. Yeah. Especially the huge ones. King George the Third. King Come George. On. Wow. Did he yeah, read them all? His son, he collected them all. Oh. <laughs> oh I believe we're in Leicester Square, and we're gonna see who this guy is. I'm pretty sure it's Shakespeare. Oh, uh, well, he probably doesn't have to be wearing a ruff all the time. No. <laughs> Always. 24-7. As a baby? Yes. Every Absolutely. single minute of his existence. Uh, what about, would people know who what about other Elizabethans? Are they under the same ruff rules, or is no. it just Shakespeare? There is no darkness but ignorance. That looks like very modern font. Like, it doesn't really go with the... The statue at all. <laughs> We're in Haymarket now. So the street is going out to Coxbury Street. Eventually we'll make it to Westminster Abbey, probably. I don't know. We got a little lost. Passing by the Royal Guards, you can tell the horses have been here. And there's a royal guardsman that people are taking pictures with, standing at attention. Oh, there's another one. Everyone's ignoring him. He must have just come out. <laughs> mm. 
We were going to try to make it for the Oregon recital, which is at 5.45, and it's haha, 5.55 tracks. We got a little lost, and the tubes, the one of the line, the circle line is down. And we've been planning to take the circle line. Look, you can see the House of Parliament right there. Everything is really all switched together in this area of London. It's just all right on top of each other, all the big stuff. This is where William I love that. Did you guys watch that wedding? I totally got up early and watched that wedding. I wonder if we can hear the organ music. Probably not. Let's listen. Do you hear anything? I don't hear anything. So we're here outside Big Ben. I just want to point out to you David Lloyd George's cloak, which is like flowing in the wind. That's pretty awesome. You guys, we are consulting the Jane Austen's London. Here's a picture of Westminster in Jane Austen's time. It looks a little different now. Or well, the cathedral itself looks the same, but there's, you know, like probably there's like kind of some stuff, a lot of stuff in between. Things have changed in the last 300 years. Just a little bit? 200? 200. 200 some? 206. 206 years. So we just got out of the organ concert, organ recital, which they did let us in. We were 15 minutes late, but they let us in, which was fun. So at least we got to see inside, and it was beautiful, actually, hearing like the sound sort of echoing. As we were coming out, one of my subscribers recognized me, so hi, Jojo. I'm so glad I got to say hello. That was awesome. Um, and yes, now we are perusing the book and going to look for some nails. You know what's funny is how like on maps everything looks so like nice and neat and you know like well oh, put together, yeah. easy to navigate. And then you're walking clean. around and it's like, and where then you're is? here and you're like, this is this <laughs> this place. Where am I? I? Can't even find myself. So yes, yeah. I don't know. It's always funny, especially when you're researching the trip. And like I was reading that book before I arrived, so it's like you have it in your head, like, oh, I'm just gonna go down this little straight line and then down that little straight line. It's gonna be super simple. No. Too long. And all of a sudden that grid becomes this real life metropolis. But it's very exciting. It's fun when it comes to life. You guys, Great George Street is the perfect place to get the obligatory red phone box photo because you can also get Big Ben in the background. It's just ideal. Ideal. Yeah. Ideal. I looked at you and I thought, ideal. Do you know what I'm quoting? No. Ideal? Yeah. No. White Christmas. Oh, I haven't seen it. <gasps> How are you existing right now? I don't know. Everyone needs to watch White Christmas. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to get on this and we're going to fix this. Because White Christmas is one of the best movies of all time. Here is Buckingham Palace at sunset. Well, just about sunset, not quite really. But an evening sun. The Victoria Memorial. The Mall or Mall. We were just discussing whether it's Mall or Mall. I think it's Mall, but like, I'm not really sure. Anyway, this is the Royal Mall is closed to uh, traffic, so all these people are just wandering around in the streets. I don't know why. I would think if there was a, actually a procession, people would know, and this yeah. area would be completely yeah. choked <laughs> with people. The gardens are just so lovely, though. Palace. The guards out. You guys, we're passing Clarence House. So this is the time to break your ankle. Ah, opportunely, right before Prince Harry pulls in and he. Porsche I'll or, jump, or jump Bentley or whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> Nicely. And then you'll be your princess. Yeah, just like that. I'll be right. No problem. Oh, look, there are some guards down there. Let's go home. Guys, I only have 41 seconds left on the treasury card. Okay. Kind of upset about it. I, this, this morning, I started out with a 32 megabyte card, right? And we're on the second day of the 32 trip. 32 megabyte? Yeah. No, no, well, gigabyte. So I really hope that I didn't actually use up 32 gigabytes. My camera was having a problem this morning, and it claimed it was dead, and I switched to a 16 gigabyte card, and it said that didn't work, and then this is the eight gigabyte card, so 
I have plenty of gigabytes. It's kind of exciting at the start of a trip when it's like you have all this empty space that you're going to fill with all of your trip memories. Look at all those British flags. The new memory card, guys. Get excited. I had to reformat it because it claimed it was full when it was empty. I don't know. It was, it was having an existential crisis. It was, ex it was jet lag. Like, that was it. Actually, I should not like No, I did that. change. I did change the timestamp on this camera. That's always something on trips that I forget to do. And then when you're going, yeah, when you're going back through your photos and it's like a trip diary, the timestamps are off. Can't eat. It's the Royal Parade Grounds at the Royal News. And I think they're getting set up for the Queen's Review. Isn't that in June every year? I think it might be. I suspect it is. Wow, look at the little Lincoln Eye. That's quite a landmark. Like when they decided to build that, that must have been very involved. Because yeah. you know, if you're adding something new to London skyline, that's pretty big. I feel like we need some horses to inspect. We need some horses to inspect. Like nobody showed up. Look. The auditorium, all here. Nobody should. Honestly. Will and Kate, I'm disappointed in you. I was really looking forward to seeing George and Marlon. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> That's true. One more day. You guys have one more chance. Westbourne Terrace buildings have these little rounded bits on the end building. That must be fun. So anybody who got the end building got that little sort of tower. We're going to cross this the zebra crossing. They're supposed to stop for us. One can only hope they do. Yes, I don't know if we've seen the outside of the hotel. Here's the park grand. Really sweet. Is it a pink one or not? 